Hey, it's Yadal Sines from MimicMethod.com where you learn foreign languages by ear. And in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to learn a sound that you don't already know, doesn't already exist in your target language, but you need to learn for your new target language, foreign language. Um, now, we have lots of free pronunciation guides you can download on our website. We'll put a link in the YouTube um, description is here as well. But in the meantime, if you want to figure out these things on your own for languages we don't offer, here's how you would do it. I'm going to use the example of the CH sound or G sound in German, the ch from ich, bisschen, and fertig. Step number one is to find a group of words you think contain that sound. So I already have three here. If I'm learning German for the first time, I'll recognize that ah, this is the same sound that I hear each time. What is the sound? So what I can do is copy and paste this word into a website called wiktionary.org. It's the Wikipedia of words in all languages. So I type in bisschen and then do a search. Um, it'll give me pronunciation. Scroll down to the pronunciation and here you go. You'll see, look for this IPA on the pronunciation and it'll give you the symbols. B I S, so bisschen. And here I go. This is like, ah, this must be the symbol that represents that sound, the phonetic symbol. And in phonetics, we don't use the German CH because this sound shows up in other languages, so they need a universal symbol to represent it. But maybe you're not sure if this is the right sound, so you're going to cross-check it with the other words you think have this sound. Let me search uh, ICH and see if I can find that same symbol in the um, pronunciation. Um, so I want to scroll down to German. Let's do a control F, find German, uh, then say pronunciation, and... This is Zurich. Um, okay, this one has different. Okay, here it is. German, regular German. Um, IPA, here it is. Same symbol. Let's just check one more to double check. Fatish. And as you can see, you want to get multiple words because determining on depending on the accent, people might pronounce words differently. So you want to have a couple of cross references. So I go to pronunciation here, and then here we go. Standard. I can see fertig, fertig, but as you can see as well, you know, other people pronounce it differently, but I'm just gonna assume this is the right one. The C sound is what interests me. So now that I know that this is the sound I want, um, I'm going to look up that sound on a Wikipedia phonology page to get its full name. So um, here's what that means. If I go to Wikipedia and type in German phonology, a phonology is, so phonetics is a study of sound in general in speech. Phonology is the study of a sound system. In this case, we're talking about the sound system of German. And in the German sound system, there are a certain number of phonemes or what we call elemental sounds. So if it shows up in Wiktionary here, then it should also show up in um, here. So if I come to the phonology page, you go to consonants, I should see a consonant chart like this. And I want to look for this sound and here it is if I, if I couldn't find it easier I can just copy paste it here and do a control F um, oh, that doesn't work actually but um, here we go this is the consonant sounds I find it here and I get the name it's a palatal fricative or I can click on the symbol itself and I'll see it's called the voiceless palatal fricative so this is the Wikipedia page specifically for the sound and it's cool, I can see other words, other languages that have the sound. But now that I have it, um, I can see that it's voiceless palatal fricative. Um, I know its place of articulation is palatal, and its manner is fricative. That's how you read consonant charts. The um, rows are the manner of articulation, and the, and the columns are the place of articulation. Once again, if you get our free pronunciation guides. You can learn what all this terminology means. It's very useful for learning a foreign language. Um, but assuming you know it now, I want to now step next step, figure out the sounds is most similar to on a physical level, then reverse engineer the pronunciation. And when I say most similar to, I mean in your target, in your first language. So in my case is English. So what I can do is come to the English phonology page and I want to look for something that's also palatal same place, the same part of the tongue and mouth that you make the sound. What do we have in English? And I can see here there's only one sound. That's the uh, yuh sound. And this is the yuh from, I can click on it to see what one it is. This is the yuh from you. Okay, you and young and uh, year, etc. 
So I'm like, okay, if this is a palatal sound, and this is yes palatal, and this German one's also palatal, then I can reverse engineer it. This is a palatal uh, approximant. And you learn in our courses what approximate means. Approximate means that the tongue comes close to the hard palate, but doesn't actually touch. Whereas here it means uh, it's a fricative, which means the tongue actually touches the hard palate in the same place, but then um, it makes contact and does a fricative sound. So maybe I can show you quickly what that will look like to give you more of a sense of idea. If I do a speech organ in Google and find a nice picture here. Uh, this is a good one here. This is the hard palate. This is where the ya and the German occur. This is the part of the tongue, point number four, I make it with. So if I already know that when I go yee, it's a palatal, then I know I can reverse engineer it and just lift my tongue a little bit more yee, and start to get the palatal sound. Okay? And it's voiceless, so I turn my voice box off. So it's and that's precisely how I was able to learn how to pronounce this sound in German by reverse engineering it from the English yes sound. Because the first time you're just like, wow, it's really awkward, but I know this is where it is because I looked it up on Wikipedia. All right, so that's how you reverse engineer and kind of navigate your way through your own mouth. But you want to kind of tune the sound. You need to make little micro adjustments with your tongue to make it sound just the same way that a native German speaker would do it. So for that, I recommend going to Forvo and guiding your tongue with feedback. Now there's three types of feedback. You can get uh, auto feedback, listening to audio and trying to tune it with your own ear. Um, and that works, you do enough times and you should be able to get the sound eventually. However, it's the hardest because if you're new to a language, your ear won't be as reliable. So the next uh, best the best thing would be to do with a native speaker. If you go to a native speaker and then you say the sound to them, they can tell you like, nah, that sounds weird or that sounds good. However, what they can do is they can't tell you all this funky mouth stuff because most people don't know these things. So the very best thing you can do for feedback is take one of our courses, work with us and get expert feedback from our team. And we can tell you when you're mispronouncing something and exactly what you need to fix it. Uh, but for now, doing it for free on your own, you can come to Forvo and this is a pronunciation dictionary. And you can take these words again, let's just take the ish again. And then you can see D-E, German. Listen to some people pronouncing it. Ich. 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 Try another person. Ich AG. Ich AG. Other sentences. Ich weiß das zu schätzen. Ich, ich weiß das zu schätzen. Ich weiß das zu schätzen. Yeah. Ich. Ich laut. Ich. All right, try a bisschen as well. Bisschen. 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 Try fertig. 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 All right, so you want to listen to native speakers and try your best to mimic them. Okay, so that's how you guide your tuning with feedback with your own ear and audio. But of course, you can do even better feedback with native speakers and even better feedback with us at our team. Um, then final step is to learn the sound, is to practice the sound in combination with every other sound. And this is where it gets you know, a bit harder work, but when you do this work, it really pays off in the end. You can come back to the German phonology page and then say, okay, now that I can do this sound by itself, what would it be like to do this sound in combination with these other consonants? If I say, mm, or mm, or so what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to combine this sound with each and go back and forth. And what you're going to find is certain sounds will be really difficult. For example, in, in um, now not all these combinations exist in German. However, it's good to practice anyways. It gives you much more dexterity and control over your, your pronunciation. What does exist, for example, is the S plus the sh, as, as occurs here in bisschen. And this is something that troubles a lot of German learners. So I would practice that. S, sh, alternating back and forth, um, and then trying to close that gap in between them. See what's going on? So I'm just trying to close that gap, do it faster until I have a nice smooth transition. 
and then I can say words that have it. Bisschen, bisschen, bisschen. And then one final pro tip for you. If you do uh, German frequency list, um, and if you figure out um, what the spelling trick is, I can come here to top 500 most frequently used words in German, and then do a search for a CH, and then go through ich nicht. Um, kind of go through mich. Now, the problem with German though is that some of these are not going to be CH, it's going to be noch. And I can confirm that if I go noch and Wiktionary search it, I'll see that noch in German pronunciation has a different sound. That's the sound. So, this is all the kind of stuff we give to you for free when you do our Elemental Sounds checklist and other free resources. However, I'm showing you right now how I figured it out on my own by just experimenting and, and traveling around the web. These free tools, if you can use them right, are extremely helpful in being able to hack the pronunciation in your target language. Um, so I recommend this for sure if we don't already have resources for your target language.